welcome to this primer on relations we will continue our discussion and let us briefly look at what we <coughs> need to know so we discussed that a relation from a set a to a set b is just a subset of a cross b it could be the empty set also meaning this relation could be the empty relation but of course we do not want to spend time on the theory of the empty set so that's a relation we saw that it generalizes the notion of a function and we saw other examples uh, and we have this bit of notation so if r is a subset of a cross b meaning if r is a relation from a to b and if a comma b is an r meaning we, you can read this as a is related to b via r then one may alternately write a r b okay that's just a piece of notation so let's continue so the topic of this lecture is relation on a set and a particular kind of relation that is most important so if x is any set then a relation on x is nothing but a relation from x to x as simple as that nothing to say about it so when you have a relation from a set to itself you just say it is a relation on the set just a bit of terminology all right so now we will discuss a special kind of relation these are called reflexive relations so what is the definition uh before we get into the definition we will be using this notation for a relation usually we have done r and s and so on but now we will use tilde so suppose tilde is a relation on a set x then we say tilde is a reflexive relation or tilde is reflexive if if x tilde x for all x in x which means what which means the pair x comma x is in tilde for all x in x which one can colloquially read as x is related to x meaning x is related to itself for all elements of the set capital x that is called a reflexive relation okay so an, a non reflexive relation would be suppose you want to okay maybe i'll get to an example here but uh, first let us see examples of reflexive relations okay so here is our first example suppose x is the set of all the integers and tilde be defined as a tilde b if a is greater than equal to b okay so this is how we define in other words uh, tilde is this particular subset a comma b of all the integers cross integers such that a is greater than equal to b that's what this means okay and this is a reflexive relation because if you pick uh, x in z then x is greater than equal to x obviously which implies x tilde x that's it so this is a reflexive relation another example you have the set of all the non zero integers and we are defining tilde as as follows so we write a tilde b if and only if a divides b so this is a reflexive relation simply because a divides a for all a whenever a is non zero and that is why we have thrown out zero so this is another example of a reflexive relation now for a non example so suppose x is the set of all the natural numbers and tilde we define as a tilde b if and only if they are relatively prime so this just means that a and b are relatively prime which means that if you have a prime number which divides one of these people then it does not divide the other so they do not have any non trivial divisors in common non trivial meaning greater than 1 that's what that's what this means perhaps you do not know about gcd and all but i have explained what that means so uh, this is a non reflexive relation because for example you pick 7 now 7 what is the gcd of 7 and 7 it is 7 right there is a prime factor common between 7 and 7 and hence it is non reflexive in fact it is highly non reflexive uh 
So you pick any integer greater than one and you see that it will not be related to itself under this relation. So it is highly non-reflexive. Okay. Now we come to another special class of relations called symmetric relations. So suppose tilde is a relation on a set X. We say tilde is symmetric if whenever X tilde Y, we have Y tilde X, right? So when we write this, we mean whenever this happens, that also happens. So that's why the word symmetric has been chosen. It's not skewed. One direction implies the other direction, so to say. So that's a symmetric relation and let's see one example and one non-example. So again, X be the set of all the integers and we define tilde as A tilde B if two divides the difference of A and B. So this is just a code word for A and B are either both odd or both even. Right, this statement just means that. So basically we are saying two things are related if they have the same parity, if they leave the same remainder when you divide by two, meaning either they are both divisible by two or they both leave a remainder of one when you divide by two. So this is how we define it. And this is a symmetric relation because if two divides a minus b, then of course it divides b minus a. And this is why it is symmetric. So that's a nice example of a symmetric relation. Here is a non-example. So suppose x is the set of all the natural numbers, then we define tilde as follows, a tilde b if and only if uh, a divides b. That's how we define it. And this is non-symmetric because if a divides b, it doesn't mean that b divides a. b could be greater than a. So this is in fact a quite a non-symmetric relation. All right, now for transitive relations. So again, tilde be some relation on a set X. We say tilde is transitive if, suppose we have X tilde Y and we have Y tilde Z, then we have X tilde Z whenever you pick three points in the set X. So what is it saying? It, say, it says that you pick three points X, Y, Z in the set X and suppose you find this to be true, then you necessarily find this to also be true. So that's why it is called transitive. It is kind of, you know, going in a path. X is going to Y sort of, Y is going to Z. So you kind of transit from X to Z. That's what, that's what gives this terminology. Okay, so again, let's see examples. So suppose you have the set of all the natural numbers as your set X, you define tilde as follows, meaning you record whether or not A divides B. So A is related to B if A divides B. And this is transitive because if uh, A divides B and B divides C, then of course A divides C. So this is a transitive relation precisely for that reason. Another example, suppose X is the set of all the integers and tilde records this less than equal to relation. So A tilde B, if A is not more than B, then this is also transitive because whenever you have A less than equal to B and B less than equal to C, you also have A less than equal to C. So this is also transitive, but here is an intransitive relation, a very popular one. So suppose X is the set of rock, paper and scissors Okay, and what is the relation? So we will record the beating relation. So let B be this relation. So first let me abbreviate. So instead of rock, paper and scissor, I will write R, P and S. And the beating relation is rock beats scissors, uh, paper beats rock, and scissors beat paper, right? This is our uh, relation on the set X. So this is the beating relation. 
and this is non transitive clearly because we see that uh, r is related to so this is a very confusing notation i've chosen maybe i should choose small letters because otherwise you might get confused so let me choose small letters this is r p s Okay, so now uh, we have R beats S and we also have S beats P. These two things we have, but we do not have R beats P. Rock does not beat paper. In fact, it is beaten by paper. Okay, so this is not a transitive relation. All right, wonderful. Now for the most important class of relations called equivalence relations and here is the definition. So tilde be some relation on a set X. We say tilde is an equivalence relation if it is symmetric, uh, reflexive, symmetric and transitive. Okay. That's the definition of an equivalence relation. As of now, it is not clear why they are so important, but it will be clear as you read more and more math. So now I want to discuss a, uh, a nice uh, relation called the fiber relation, or at least what I call the fiber relation. This may not be a standard terminology. So let's do this in detail. So fix a function. So fix a function from a set X to a set Y. So first we will need the definition of a fiber. So let Y be some point in the target of F. The fiber above Y is defined as this set which is what which is which is that of course we know what pre images mean and uh, since this is a singleton this is just a one element set we also by a little bit of an abuse of notation we also write this as that this is so this is a very common you know abuse of notation Okay, so that is the definition of fiber above y and pictorially you can imagine you can imagine x as this rectangular thing. You can imagine this as y. You have the function f and if this is little y then the fiber above y is all the points in the set x that map to the point y. So it looks like a hair strand in this picture which is why this terminology has been chosen. In the other kind of picture that we usually draw, we make this blob here and we make another blob here. And if this is little y, then the fiber above y is all the things which map to the point y under the function f. Okay, whichever picture you like. So that's the fiber above y and here is our relation, fiber relation. So yeah, so this could be an empty set. This could be an em empty set because the function may not be surjective. So it is possible that this is empty for some values of y. All right, so now what is the fiber relation? So define a relation, choose a name, let's, let's call it RF. as follows. Right? So we say that two things are related in the set, in the domain of F, if they have the same image under F. In other words, two things are related if they are in the same fiber of F. Right? So yeah, so th this, this, we will expand on this more, but to note that two distinct fibers do not intersect. So that's a simple, simple uh, observation. Uh, if 
y1 is not equal to y2 then this intersection is empty right so i hope you see that that is empty simply because if there was an element let's say little x common to both then what is its image its image is y1 but its image would, would also be y2 but y1 is different from y2 so they do not intersect and everything is going to be in some fiber right everything in the sorry what have i done everything in the set x is going to lie in some fiber you just take the image of f whatever you get the fiber above that point contains your set uh, contains your point little x okay so every point in the domain is lying in some fiber and two distinct fibers intersect in the empty set so the set x gets partitioned into fibers in this pictures uh, in this picture the fibers are these things and of course they do not intersect as the picture suggests or in this picture you can kind of partition your thing like that so just some remarks okay so what is the fiber relation the fiber relation this rf is defined as x1 is related to x2 if they have the same image which is equivalent to saying that they are in the same fiber okay so so this is called the fiber relation perhaps this terminology is non standard but i will use it okay and this is uh, an equivalence relation so that's what i want you to note so the fiber relation is an equivalence relation why is that so let's check uh, reflexivity so suppose x uh, is given then maybe i'll do it properly so here reflexivity so x in x is arbitrary implies of course fx equals fx which implies x tilde x or x r fx so reflexivity is established symmetry say x1 r f x2 then by definition which obviously means this which means right and lastly transitivity since i've run out of space i will leave this as an exercise so the fiber relation is a very nice example of an equivalence relation and uh, with this i want to end this lecture as usual like comment share subscribe and i'll see you next time